Okay, I know you saw the title. So welcome everyone uh, back to my channel and to Favorites Friday, or five Friday Favorites, sorry. So um, as you can tell by the title, it's all about Disney movies. And just so everybody knows, I tried to film this uh, on, I tried to film it on my laptop and while I was uh, getting my makeup on and it just wasn't working. So I decided to just uh, stop doing it on there. And just go back to this. I just hats off to all YouTubers who can do that, um, who can talk at the exact same time as applying their makeup. Me, I get so easily distracted. So hats off to you guys. You guys are amazing. <laughs> I'm just gonna stick to what I like and uh, what I'm used to. But it was nice to try to get out of my comfort zone and everything, and uh, and play with my makeup as I was talking about my favorites of my favorite Disney movies. So this is Favorite Disney Movies Part 1. There will be uh, another one. Um, I just don't know when that will be because <laughs> I have other stuff going on. So but anyways, let's just go ahead and get into the video. In the past I've uh, mentioned uh, my favorite movies and I would rank them from uh, 10 to 1, like what was on like the number 10 spot and what was on the number 1 spot. Uh, this time it's just, I'm just not going into any type of order. I literally love Disney movies, so that's why it's going to be multiple parts. So I'll even mention like my, when I'm mentioning the movie, I'll most likely like tell you my favorite song from it or something like that. So because everyone has an inner Disney princess in them or inner Disney prince, so might as well. <laughs> so but first up is Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. I love Snow White. For a very long time, uh, I have such a strong love for her. I know that I was Snow White for Halloween at least, uh, I want to say maybe three times. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I, I must have dressed up for ha uh, with her for Halloween at least three times. And uh, my sister and I would dress up in our Snow White dresses and perform and everything. It was really, really sweet. Um, I did try to get my daughter to watch the Snow White live movie, um, or just like it, it. It's something that was held in like in the mid '80s or late '80s, and uh, it was in uh, it, it was live from like New York and everything, and uh, it was just it's on YouTube somewhere. But I tried to get her to watch it recently, and she just she didn't really have too much of an interest in it, which is okay. But she liked the songs. I feel like the song Hi Ho was, is probably my favorite because I used that so much when I was working that yeah that's the only song that I use whenever whenever I was like working and everything and I was just like it's home from work we go I won't sing it I promise <laughs> but that's usually what I would think. Next is Little Mermaid. Now I always thought of Ariel as a, re as a rebel you know, she never listens to her dad, she never listens to uh, Sebastian, she never listens to Flounder. The only person she listens to is Ursula. <laughs> so she's a little bit of a rebel. Um, you know, when you watch this movie as a child, you think, wow, she can swim uh, under her water. Oh, her hair just does this nice flowy thing. Oh, I want my hair to do the exact same thing. And I loved her red hair. Now, when you watch it as an adult, <laughs> Your thoughts are, I love the music more than the plotline. A uh, Part of Your World, yes, is a great uh, song. However, I love Poor Unfortunate Souls just a little bit more. Don't hate me in the comments for it, but I just really loved it more. There was just something about this villain song that was just so good. <laughs> so Silent Zorro is next. I know I said that uh, uh, that it's going to be Disney movies, so, and I'm aware that this is not a animated uh, Disney movie. I have loved uh, Zorro for quite a long time. I remember watching it when I was uh, in, like, just during the summertime, uh, like, uh, after, you know, in between uh, semesters, and, in, well, sorry, in between grades, basically, so, like, grade nine and then to grade 10 like right before the summer uh, like right when summer started i was watching that i i usually like watch all that stuff um 
Now, the sign of Zorro is literally taking eight episodes, eight edited episodes, to make it into a movie. Because, as we know, Zorro is a TV series, and they took eight, eight of their episodes from, um, from the first season, and they turned it into a movie. Like, I loved this movie so much. Um, I'm, I love the series so much. I loved Guy Williams. <laughs> I mean, wow. <laughs> I know this was back in the 1950s, but this man was a handsome stud. Like, he was a stud. The Parent Trap is on here, but which version, you may ask? Well, in all honesty, I liked the Lindsay Lohan version better than the Haley Mills one. Let me explain. Now, as much as I love the original, I did love the original, but the remake was my favorite. This was the one time that I felt like the remake was just better. Like, it's nice to see the callbacks that the remake did back to the original, like seeing Vicky for the first time since the, uh, since the original had ended, and then seeing uh, Lindsay, uh, hearing Lindsay Lohan singing uh, Let's Get Together um, to herself and then uh, obviously like sharing the girls on holidays and everything like it, it was it was honestly a really really nice twist to it and, and there was some so there was a certain twist that had happened like uh, like the um, like the housekeeper was all of a sudden falling in love with, no, with uh, the butler from the other home and uh, and there's certain things that happen in the in this movie in the um, remake that made me think I love this movie just more plus I just love Dennis Quaid and Natasha Richardson I mean it, it was nice that they took it uh, that they took stuff from the uh, from the original and they made it into their own for the remake Mary Poppins, I don't remember when I started really loving this movie, but, um, or when I really, or when I started to really watch it. Um, I remember during a sing-along song, uh, VHS thing that Mary Poppins was on it a few times. Uh, they had, like, uh, the song I Love to Laugh on there, they had, um, they had Super Cow by Just the Guest Bialidocious, they had that one on there, they had Chim Chim Cherie. The one that had Chim Chim Cherie, for some reason, I that was the first one that I saw, and that was the first one that I loved the most. So therefore, that catapulted me to actually watch the full movie. And I remember loving Julie Andrews and uh, Dick Van Dyke in, in that scene. Um, I loved the songs, I loved the plot, and I really loved the animation. I loved the fact that there was animation mixed in with live action, and I loved how they did it. because. They didn't do it the way that you think that they did. So it was actually really interesting to see how that was made. The Fox and the Hound is up next. So this movie broke my heart in so many ways. Like, as an adult, this movie reminded, it reminds me of like mixed race couples and mixed race relationships or mixed race friendships. Um, these two characters literally are sneaking around they are they're a fox and they're a hound they don't necessarily on paper they shouldn't actually be hanging out but however they develop a friendship which to me is a is beautiful that's a beautiful thing and you know then they grow up and they grow apart but they they still have this beautiful friendship that they've that, that they've had and, you know, if you watched this movie, if you have watched this movie, you know that there are some heartbreaking moments in this whole story, or in this whole movie. So if you, but if you haven't watched it, I suggest you go watch it. Oliver and Company. The song, Why Should I Worry, is on my iPod, and I listen to that song while I work out, and I listen to that song when I just need, like, a little bit of a confidence boost. Whenever I had a customer tell me in retail that uh, they weren't coming back uh, to the store, I always had that song stuck in my head because I'm just like, okay, well, why should I worry? <laughs> it's one person out of so many other people that shop here. <laughs> so. But, you know, this movie mentions, like, homelessness, uh, gambling debt, f jealousy, friendship, acceptance, etc. I mean, who doesn't love this movie? It's 
wouldn't be a Disney uh, favorites video without mentioning Aladdin. I can't decide which uh, version I loved better, the, uh, the original animated or the live action remake. I personally just love them both. I can't decide. I mean, I loved Robin Williams as the genie. I mean, nobody else can play him better. Um, I do love the songs Friend Like Me, A Whole New World, but when they had Jasmine in the live action version sing the song Speechless, that song just, I loved that. I loved that song. That song was just so, because you feel her determination to want to lead and to basically, um, voice her, uh, her power that she knows that she has, that even Jafar knows that she has, but he keeps having her stay silent. But, uh, she's not gonna, but she didn't stay silent. So that, that to me was just, I felt like that was so much of a stand up for what's right type of song and you feel her strength in that and I and I don't know why I just I, I know this, these are Disney movies but I just really love that uh, and that song in that and in that moment I all right to wrap up this video I have to mention Encanto okay you everyone knows this movie I'm pretty sure some parents are sick of it and some parents are not I'm not sick of it. I really am not sick of this movie at all. If you never watched Encanto, go do it. If you have, I'm so sorry if you're annoyed, but, and, and I'm, uh, yeah, I'm just really sorry if you're annoyed. Um, I highly do recommend this movie to, uh, to all families. And, um, I feel for this character of Mirabelle. Uh, her family has been blessed with all these powers. But she's the uh, but she's the only kid that does not have it. I mean, besides her dad and her uncle, and uh, her abuela, uh, she's the only other person that does not have the power that wasn't blessed with the power. And um, you know, her mom can heal with food. Her aunt can control the weather. Her uh, one sister can grow flowers out of nowhere. One sister has uh, incredible strength. Uh, one cousin can hear from uh, a very long distance away. One cousin can shapeshift, and the other cousin can talk to animals. Like, well, uh, you know, you're wondering how come I didn't get a, a gift the entire time. So, I mean, she wasn't blessed with power, and that to me, uh, that to me is sad. But at the same time, she is determined. In that in that movie to show that she doesn't need the power to be special, and what I love about uh, what I love about this movie the most is that there's no princesses. There's no princesses in this whole movie. I'm happy about that. I, I feel like it's a nice break to have no princesses in a Disney movie. It's just it's just a young girl who wishes that she had powers, but comes to accept that she doesn't. I mean, it's an incredible movie incorporating Latin American culture in it, and it's just, it's, it's great. I, it's hard to pick a song, because I do like We Don't Talk About Bruno, and I do like The Family Madrigal. My, my daughter loves The Family Madrigal song, and I like We Don't Talk About Bruno, so it's like, <laughs> that's, that's fine. <laughs> you know, this movie's all about family and acceptance and everything, and, uh, and support. So who doesn't love that? This ends the part one of the favorite Disney movies. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I, uh, I'm i wondering what is your favorite Disney movie that you absolutely love, that you can't get out of your head, that even those songs are catchy that you just can't get enough of. So um, please give it a like, please leave a comment below, um, uh, please subscribe and share it with anybody that you'd like to share it with. So, hope all of you have a really good day. Alright?